you can see the marine is having some work done and uh, there's all sorts of things going on we got heavy plant working over there moving things up and down we've got pontoons being put in new piles being put in it's nice to see it it's a council-run marina like a lot of marinas in this part of the world and they're keeping it up which is good to see but we're in we're sitting out the storm there's nothing else we can do um, it's still very very bouncy out in the north channel you can see a lot of white caps things like that and um, nothing we can do till it calms down we do have some side panel damage from the storm one of our lashings has snapped and i'll fix that when i go back aboard but considering what it's been like i think we've got off quite lightly and i think i've got an echo from that wall <laughs> but you can't have everything can you so how's it going out there bev <laughs> um i was a bit fooled the um gusts at the top of the mast seemed to drop off a bit so i went to have a look um i took the binoculars with me and it's not looking all that good out there. It's um, very, very white cappy out in the North Channel. And I've since had a word with the harbour master and he basically said, don't go out on a day like this. It's just not the day to go out. So, and there was a, another old salt talking to him and he said the same sort of thing. I wouldn't go out on a day like this, he said. I'd rather be in here. And I thought to myself, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, just as a little aside, if you don't have a, a decent pair of binoculars aboard, do get some. Um, it can make a heck of a difference. I mean, I could see all the way over to Scotland. I could see snow and iron, things like that. But more importantly, I could see all the white caps between me and Scotland. Um, just as a quick aside, these are 7x50s and I consider for boat use these to be the, the best size. They're big enough lenses to collect lots of light so the images are lovely and bright even at night. Uh, they're 7x50s so they magnify but not too much. Um, I have a pair of 10 by 50s somewhere and the problem is that when you're using them at sea on a boat, the image wobbles around too much because they're simply more powerful binoculars. Um, my rule of thumb for buying these, very very simple rule of thumb, is pick them up in the shop and look through them. If the image isn't really clear and crisp, if it's fuzzy around the edges or it's got lots of colours, separations, put them back on the shelf, go buy a different pair. Just buy the ones in the shop with the best image when you look through them. Simplest rule of thumb of a lot. Those ones have a, um, a compass inside and we have found that very useful, haven't we Bev? Oh yeah. These ones, this is, this is the uh, compass in here. Um, it's incredibly useful. You pick something off a chart and you get its approximate bearing, say 200 magnetic, and you get the binoculars and you turn around it says, until it says 200 magnetic in the binoculars and you should be looking straight at whatever it is you're trying to find. It works a treat. So if you get the choice of getting ones with a, a compass in, do that too. One anyway. Of the th uh, one, going back to the thing. One of the things that I like about the uh, compass section is that um, when you hand me the binoculars, you'll say, look at 220, for example. I'm looking at 220, and I'm ex seeing exactly what you're seeing, which is really useful. I'm not trying to faff about with it. Anyway, back to this. Where we are at the minute, um, the North Channel's kicking up, probably an aftermath of yesterday's storm. Um, there's another blow due in tonight, so tomorrow's probably out, so it looks like it will be the day after. So we're going to be weather-bound here for a couple of days. Um, we are hoping that the day after, I've got all my passage plan made out for it, and I've got my chart upside down for some peculiar reason. You can never leave things in the boat. Right, I've got my chart all marked out with um, all my waypoints already marked on them, so... If it all goes to plan, in a couple of days' time, we will be out and running across the North Channel. Well, seeing as we're not going out sailing, we decided to um, go for a walk around the forest at uh, Glen Arm. And uh, it's just at the top of the town. So it's really easy to get to, but it's really pretty. We've seen uh, bluebells, uh, we've seen ferns, and I really love it when they're so new that they're all wrapped up in a nice little coil. But the highlight was actually seeing a red squirrel. Um, there's actually red squirrels here, which is why the gray, if you see a gray squirrel, uh, you've got, there's a hotline. <laughs> if there's a uh, if you see a grey squirrel, but uh, it was a red squirrel, and that's just brilliant.
that funny little uh, yellow marker is uh, actually um, the anchor marker for the fish farm um, so um, you can pass either side of it but you do if you're going to be passing between the fish farm and the anchor marker um, you need to be passing quite close well it's about time uh, I learned how to uh, adjust the main sheet um, what I like about it is the fact that I can control how comfortable we are feel like um, for Beverly and I we feel comfortable about 15 degrees that's about its maximum heel uh, that we feel comfortable with but when it gets to 20 degrees uh, I'm just not feeling comfortable and I'm feeling more apprehensive so it's I like the fact that I feel that I'm in control of that so I'm doing all right on the easing but boy when I'm pulling it in to accelerate it is hard work because oh it's just a lot harder to pull it in than I thought. It's Force 5, we've got sails up and we've got the engine on. Why are we motor sailing in a Force 5? Well, it's all to do with the fact that um, we, we need to make sure that we're um, at a particular waypoint and um, we should have left at least an hour earlier but one thing led to another and um, we left late so the motor is another good way of um, making up that time uh, just so that we're going that little bit quicker also we want to get through the channel as quickly as possible we're going to be in a wind over tide situation which in the north channel is not a good thing to do so again we're just trying to get through it as quick as possible and it's just a case of prudence more than not prudent so being prudent being prudent <laughs> Prudence will want a, 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 a photo bomb at that point, I can tell you now. <laughs> We've arrived and we're in one piece, <laughs> which is always nice. And um, we're um, oh. provide, um, on our continual quest at the moment to improve our sailing and improve just how we're doing things here on Salty Lass. Um, so when Beverly, because Beverly did the um, plan. Um, but when Beverly did the plan, um, she decided uh, the two locations that she wanted to go because we always have a backup plan. Sorry to interrupt, I had three. Oh, did you? If you look at the thing under you, you see that's plan B. Mm -hmm. 
plan C is on the next page. <laughs> okay, fair enough. There you go, plan C, and on this side is plan A. Yeah. On that side. Okay. So, three plans. <laughs> we were leaving. <laughs> we just regarded plan A quite quickly because the tide and weather were such that we'd have had the tide pushing us out the North Channel and a 25 knot wind blowing us into the North Channel. And that's just not the sort of thing you want, is it? No, um, going into that kind of wind over tide uh, situation is um, not to be recommended. We have done it a couple of times. We have done. 25 knot wind, five of that would have been ours and 20 would have been the wind. Mm. By going across the wind, we eliminate the five. Yes. So what would be a 25 knot headwind, if we go across the wind, it's only a 20 knot wind because we're not going into it at five knots. True. So the track going northwest was out. Mm. So that left two tracks, which is going northeast and going east. Mm. So since we don't want to go any further north because we're already behind where we should be. Mm. So we've gone northeast into the Firth of Clyde and we went directly across the current at this particular point. Yes. And my course originally was predicated on doing a one of about 070. We actually wanted to go 045 or 030, if I call. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, but because of the tidal component, uh, we were going that way. The tide was going that way. So our course wound up going much more northeasterly. Um, I knew where I wanted to be and I knew roughly when I wanted to be. So I worked the course out backwards. Which mm. turned out to be very, very fortunate. <laughs> yes, it did, because um, um, Glen Arm was just slightly off the chart that we were going to use, and Beverly put Glen Arm in. Um, I put it in the wrong place. I measured from the wrong mark. I measured from the division above the one I should have been using. So I had Glen Arm five nautical miles too far north. Which explains why we got very puzzled on our first way, on our first position check. Yeah, because when I was looking at the first position check and I was like looking at it and I was looking at it and I was basically saying, we are way too far south. Um, but that is because um, Beverly had um, got the Glen Arm five nautical miles further north, so no wonder we were south. So the whole way up, we were a little bit south of our waypoints, but it wasn't a big problem. We were making the same distance. Mm. The other thing uh, was that um, Beverly had worked it all out that we needed to be at a certain point, uh, a certain time, and we had left an hour late. So what we did to compensate for that is put the engine on, and we were only basically getting... We didn't put the engine on full or anything like that, but we basically made sure that we were giving to ourselves between one and one and a half uh, knots of, t of engine assist. So that over four to five hours, we made up four to five nautical miles of distance. Which would be right for basically the fact that we missed, we went late. Yeah. Um, so that's why we were actually in very pretty hefty winds and we still had the engine on. Yeah. But we got to the corner uh, near Sander, which is where we wanted to be, and um, we were able to cut the engine and, and um, do, do a bit of sailing right up the side of the coast at that point. Yes. Um, the things that we were trying to learn um, at this point um, is that uh, we've been um, reading our Yachtmaster book, and um, we were noticing that waypoints um should be marks in boxes whereas observations are uh, marks in circles so um i made sure that um, as we were taking our readings and stuff that we were using appropriate marks yes yeah, so in this one here as you can see we've got the waypoints in blue and we've got the actual observed positions in as green circles with a dot in them Hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, that's on the uh, plastic covering. <laughs> <laughs> the actual chart, we did it with a HB pencil so that we can rub it off and um, use it again. So, we're in, we're happy, we're drinking coffee, we've got beef bergen on and Mr D for tonight's dinner. Mm. And um, it's a case now waiting for the blow to go. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to go around Glenarm and we'll no, show not. you... Not Glenarm, sorry, Ballycastle. <laughs> 
Yeah, so we're going to go around Ballycastle and um, we'll see nope. what we can see. We're not in Ballycastle. Oh, fuck. Oh. Beep! Take three. So, so we're going to go around Campbell Town. Campbell Town. <laughs> okay, right, this clearly doesn't work and I, I just push it out of the way. So we're going to go around Campbell Town and show you a few of the views and the approaches and things like that once the wind stops blowing. Yeah, sounds like a plan. It does.